yesterday. I find myself losing by one goal with time expiring. There's $1,000 on the line and thousands watching live. The pressure's on. My opponent's closing in. I have zero boost. I need to win this game. So how'd I get in this situation? Well, today I'm gonna to tell you the story of this game and everything that led up to it. How I learned that Rocket League is all in your head. How I used mind games against my opponent. And how I ended up playing Rocket League with T-Pain. Just kidding, that last part isn't in the video. I just wanted to brag that I played Rocket League with T-Pain. <laughs> Uh -uh. Oh, that actually worked, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I've never been this pumped to score in Rocket League. You guys, I want to see some flip resets. Sorry. Yeah, flip reset. Yep. <laughs> Here it goes. <laughs> wow! That was a flip oh. reset, guys. Yeah. <laughs> no, I could have blocked that, but I didn't do it, but that watch was this. magical! <laughs> the real story begins now. In my head. You can spend money, that can go anywhere. Bragging rights live with you for your whole life. This is something that marks you as either a winner or as a loser. So what are we watching? This is the Salt Mine Underground, or Smug. Of course, we are starting off the action with Sunless versus Seabell. And actually, Sunless has been tweeting a lot lately about how He's trash he feels like he is. <laughs> He's been really upset. <laughs> so this might actually be the most poorly timed ones show match he's ever agreed to. I'll explain what they're talking about later. For now, let's dive into the game. These two are ready to do battle. So what we're going to do now is head down to the field for Sunless versus Seabell. Rocket League is a mind game. That's something I've been learning the hard way for the past couple weeks. Like the commentators mentioned, I was currently in the crash and burn phase, and this show match against competent rival YouTuber Seabell in front of thousands couldn't have come at a worse time. Let's go through the games my mind was playing. Okay, let's see. At this point, I think I was thinking something along the lines of, oh f oh f this is not going great. So this has got no control over this game whatsoever. Three is zero in favor of Seabell. Um, Okay, so this isn't just me, is it? Okay, <laughs> okay. 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 alright, here we go. Thankfully, that lag moment was only in the broadcast and not the actual game. At this point, I knew things were going badly, but I was encouraged by the fact that all of Seabell's goals so far had seemed kind of like a fluke. At least that's what I was telling myself. We were expecting to see Sunless go Ooh, for what a scene. Seabell, that's too early, dude. You're playing really well. Don't, don't get overconfident. Oh! Yeah. Well, Sunless is back in it. I was back in it. Feeling confident, I decided it was time for a fake. Funny enough, so did Seabell. Double fake kickoff. Sunless takes a shot. Oh, it's it! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Here in my own corner with full boost, I knew Seabell would press me. How did I know that? Well, this is where it gets a little weird. The day before, I was queuing ones and I ran into Seabell, going under the ingenious disguise as G-Bell. Thankfully, I was disguised a little better, so he had no idea it was me, and I used this time to scout him a little bit. Turns out G-Bell's pretty solid and he beat me pretty easily. But I learned a couple things about his playstyle. Not to mention his first couple goals had all been really aggressive challenges. It doesn't take a genius to know he was gonna challenge here. I managed to not miss the open net, and on the ensuing kickoff, I had a good first touch and a good shot. Six goals in a row, I was rolling. I really like what I saw from earlier on from Seabell, which made the rest of it so frustrating. There's a son that's looking for that flick. Oh, oh, that's beautiful. Seven in a row. That's disgusting. And it looks like this, uh, this self-hatred he has for himself on Twitter and his Rocket League performance has been doing him some good. These are the tweets he's talking about. Basically, I've been playing more than ever, but my rank has been plummeting. We could see a Sunless on the on the verge of an emotional breakdown if this matchup doesn't go well for him. Joke's on you, I was already dead inside by the time this match started. Still, there was kind of a lot resting on this, which I started to feel more and more as Seabell clawed his way back into this game. One thing I have learned through all this, though, is how important it is to shut off your mind while you're playing. It's tempting to overthink things when you're trying to improve. But during this play right here, I wasn't thinking about anything at all, which is way harder than it sounds for people like me who overthink everything. Nice air dribble here from Sunless. Good yeah, control. this is this is what happens at this sort of level. When Sunless can pull plays like this out, it's always going to catch you out. Had some sort of plan B, but it wasn't going to be good enough. And now with only 20 seconds left, Sunless feels like he's got it. With that goal, he will. Nine to five. And the momentum shift happened like that. 
Game one was in the books, and we were headed to game two. I'm going to talk about the gamer poise here what? from Sunless. He is in right now. He is immersed in this gameplay. Just no emotion, no matter what happens. Again, that's because I'm already dead inside. I'm telling you, it really helps just to emotionally detach from your gameplay. <laughs> he is melded into the screen. Oh, oh what a save! What is that to watch? A wonder save from Seabell. A lot of players aren't going to know how to transition it from that corner into your net in very quick fashion. Ooh. Which Seabell very quickly has the counterattack. Guys, remember when I couldn't do the speed flip? Well, I can do it now. <laughs> Seabell's not happy. He's shocked. He didn't expect this. Right over the top. So not making the mistake. Seabell, he's asking a lot of himself mechanically. Flip oh! reset. And Sunless went up to challenge him for it. Oh, I'm not too sure if he needed to. Oh, what a save! Seabell gets there. Look, these players very good so far, at least when it comes to uh, fundamentals. Though, as I say that, Sunless has a little bit of a fun time trying to find that boost. Seabell out of boost. Forced to take the shot, he almost caught Sunless sleeping. Oh! oh no, he baited him! Just under a minute in game two, I had a one goal lead on Seabell when I went for this. Sunless, he's aiming for the car. Oh, he's not got it though. Seabell away. This time it's gotta be quicker. He realizes it. Sunless trying to track back. Just clip Seabell's car a little bit. Oh, good and just That's so smart. Doesn't push it over to the corner. Knows that Seabell's already over there. Sunless is not making the little mistakes that Seabell is. As I say it, he's had a go at that corner again. Sunless, stay away. Don't go to that corner. It's not your friend. You don't need a go. You were all good. Seabell has tied this game up. We don't have that much time left either. Even after that little throw from me, I knew I could get a quick counter here, but I wasn't quick enough and did not see the demo coming. Seabell from one goal down to one goal up. So here I was, down one goal with zero boost and no time left. Flip. He's got the flick! Zero seconds! Sunless sends us to overtime! Oh my goodness! Unreal! These guys... Seabell throw down the gauntlet and Sunless threw it straight back. Typical throw for content YouTuber action right here. Oh my goodness. Incredible. Oh, it's over the top. Sunless yeah, no, Seabell's not recovered. Oh! oh <laughs> and he takes it. So this is where the mind game really begins. Sometimes it's really difficult to win that third game in the five game series to complete the sweep. And sure enough, Seabell was not gonna go down that easily. Seabell in uh, typical Seabell fashion is looking pretty good. Oh, what a challenge. That was so risky. That is going to be oh. just off. <laughs> but uh, I think Seabell's done enough here. There's too little time. Oh. And uh, it will go in off the bounce. We've got ourselves a matchup here. I mean, if you're going to have a reverse sweep, this is a good way to start it. There's no way I choke this series, right? It feels like momentum is constantly shifting here. Honey, are you doing anything important? No, I'm not. I can come help. No problem. We're heading into game number four here. Sunless still on match point. So you're in game four that Seabell really started to get back into his game, being really aggressive, going for some great challenges. And so I knew I had to get up earlier. Oh. And it was just too tempting to not go for Sunless zero boost. He's not going to be there in time to take the shot. And his recovery probably will be a bit late. Seabell as well. Low oh, he boost missed. And he's missed it. Well, he had to take it quickly, but he had to take it better than that. <laughs> yes. Oh, there's the tilt up. Yes. Oh, this is lovely. This is my type of play here. Looking completely <laughs> out of control the whole time and then end it with a bump. All right, so here's the other part I didn't tell you about my mind game with Seabell. I told Seabell before this match that I had run into him in ranked the day before, but I lied to him. I told him that I beat him so that he psychologically thought I had already won. Put his concentration hat on for this one for sure. Look at him. He's like, make sure my approach is perfect. And here we go. Did that mind game actually work on Seabell? Probably not, but it was kind of funny. And now here in game four, I had a one goal lead and I was feeling like I could just put away this series right now. But that was a big mistake because I forgot the other thing I learned from Seabell when I played him. He's really good in the air. Look at this man go. 
All I have to do here is control the ball and not let Seabell come and attack me and put it in my own net so that I'm down one goal with three seconds left. Oh wait, that's what I just did. Six, five up! <laughs> the Sunless goes with the Johnny Boy dribble to his own detriment. I know he wanted to finish it. He could see the end of the series right oh! there, but you've got to play it smart. Sunless over to the corner. There's a lot of work to do though. He's got to keep it up. First touch does well. Second oh! touch does better. And it drops on the line. Seabell wins it by the razor finished of margin. This series was going to the last game. We have got ourselves a game five. These two are clearly well matched up. By this point in the series, I was finally truly in the zone. I don't really remember a single moment from this game until watching it back, obviously. They call this the flow state, where you're so focused on the task you're doing, you're not really thinking about anything else. Like, am I challenging at the right time? Am I making mistakes here positionally? Which is usually what I'm thinking about. Sunless free to nothing. For the rest of the game, I was pretty much in complete control. I felt confident what I was doing. I wasn't overthinking things. I wasn't second guessing myself. If I made a mistake, I'd quickly just get back, get up and challenge the ball. This has been a phenomenal strategy so far from Sunless. He is unrelenting. This is the quickest he's played all series. I just can't really describe the feeling of two weeks of utter failure, overthinking, deranking, and just L after L, frankly. To come onto a show match in front of a live audience against a peer that I respect and play a match that I felt proud of. It just, uh, well, it feels good to win one. How about you guys? You guys struggling in ranked? Please let me know in a comment. I love to hear how you guys are doing. It would honestly make me feel less bad if I knew, you know, other people are also deranking. Or, you know, if you're peaking and you're doing amazing right now, tell me that too. Just remember, it's okay to have ups and downs. And the best thing you can do is get good. Now I was gonna say talk to the people that love and support you the most, but yeah, get good too.